Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am Marlon James, Lieutenant Colonel, U.S. Army, retired, and welcome to Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated's Martin Luther King Jr., brother Martin Luther King Jr., wreath laying ceremony. We give our honor to God first and glory to our brother, and we welcome you again to this commemorative event. I am the president of Alpha Psi Lambda Chapter Fraternity of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and we celebrate our 80th year in Alpha Dome today. But we are one Alpha, one Alpha strong in South Carolina and in the Midlands. And we celebrate this joint event with our brother chapter of Omicron Iota Lambda. I will be followed by Brother D'Angelo. Good afternoon to all. I am Joseph D'Angelo, the president of the Omicron Auto Lambda chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity uh, seated here in Columbia, South Carolina. I welcome you all today and I thank you for your attendance and in support of this wonderful event. Uh, I remind you that Dr. King was not only a, a, a very revered uh, civil rights leader, but he was also a very, uh, very affluent in the faith community. So as we honor his me memory today with the commemoration of this wreath, we thank you again for your, for your continued service and we ask that you just always continue to, to strive in the leadership and, and to move forward in the various capacities that Dr. King supported. Uh, followed by me, we'll have an invocation of, uh, of our chapter chaplain, uh, Mr. Raymond Glover. And additionally, uh, the guests that are outlined on your, uh, on your uh, profile here today, we just ask that you follow in order um, after each person speaks. Again, thank you for your time, and we welcome you to today's event. Thank you. Once again, we welcome our distinguished guests, visitors, elected officials, and appointed officials. Thank you so very much for coming again today. I took the liberty to see if there was any prayers by King on the internet. We know there are many sermons of his out there, but there are prayers as well. So this prayer is actually brought to you by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Let us pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this golden privilege to worship you the only true God of the universe. We come to you today grateful that you've kept us through the long night of the past and ushered us into the challenge of the present and the bright hope for the future. We are mindful, oh God, that man cannot save himself, a man is not the measure of things, and humanity is not God. Bound by our chains of sin and finiteness, we know we need a savior. We thank you, oh God, for the spiritual nature of man. We are in nature, but we live above nature. Help us to never to let anyone in any condition pull us so low as to cause us to hate. Give us the strength to love our enemies and do good to those despite the use us and persecute us. We thank you for the church founded upon the word that challenges us to do more than to sing and pray, but to go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depending on us and not upon you. Then finally, help us to realize that man was created to shine like the stars and live on through eternity. Keep us, we pray, in perfect peace. Help us to walk together, pray together, sing together, and live together to that day when all God's children, black, white, red, and yellow, rejoice in the common band of humanity in the kingdom of our Lord and our God. This is our prayer. Amen. Good afternoon. We gather here today to remember a man who refused to be afraid. A man who would not speak, but to tell the truth. Who would not kneel, but to God. A man who would not be moved, but to march. And we come here to honor him nearly 47 years after his death. Not because of how much we believed in him, by how much he believed in all of us. Because no matter how many challenges he faced, no matter how many times he was threatened or found himself in a jail cell, no matter how many times that faith seemed unfounded or even dangerous, he never gave up. Now it's our turn to stand, to march, and to live the dream he died for. It is for those reasons that I welcome you all here on behalf of the city of Columbia and our mayor, Stephen K. Benjamin, 
And I want to take this opportunity to thank both chapters of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated for continuing this tradition of the wreath laying ceremony and honoring the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, so I hope that you all uh, pay attention, not only enjoy the remainder of the program, but keep in the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King and learn something from this and go forward from this day using that information and continuing to build our community. So thank you all for being here. Good afternoon, what a beautiful day. I couldn't have asked better weather. Um, I'm honored today to be here. I'm honored to be uh, among friends and citizens who love the city. But, uh, but mostly I'm honored to remember Martin Luther King for what he fought for. I'm honored to be one of, one of the people that he fought for, for equality. I'm honored to be an American citizen. I'm honored to be a Colombian South Carolinian. I'm honored to be part of your community. Thank you all for bringing this to live every single year. This is my third year celebrating Martin Luther King. And every year, it goes bigger and bigger. And reminds me the reason that we are serving the public. It reminds me why we are where we are and why we love the city. It's because of everybody here, because they love each other. And that's what we want to continue on doing. Let's not forget, but to continue and educate our kids and remember this day and remember Martin Luther King for what he fought for, equality. Thank you all for having me. I'm honored to be here. Thank you again. Reverend Johnny Ray Noble, PhD, pastor. Pastor Noble is a young man on fire for God and is blessed with tremendous gifts to minister to his people. He was called into the gospel in 1991 at the age of 16. Pastor Noble has been involved in ministries throughout the nation. He is a champion and advocate of youth causes and is the president and founder of Chosen Generation Ministries. Academically, Pastor Noble has earned a Bachelor of Science in Management from Wayland Baptist University, a Master of Arts in Theology, and a Master of Arts in Christian Counseling. Professionally, Pastor Noble is a licensed pastoral counselor. Pastor Noble is also the author of two religious publications, Answering the Call, A Study in Art and Preaching, and The Preaching Papers, an anthology of preaching. He is a contributing writer in the bi-monthly publication, Pastoral Journal. Pastor Noble sees Second Nazareth as the key stakeholder in the Edgewood community and serves as CEO of the Edgewood Foundation. I introduce to some and present to others our guest speaker for today, Reverend Johnny Ray Noble, PhD, our pastor and brother. Good afternoon, Columbia. First, we want to say thank you for those that thought enough of us to have us share with you on such an auspicious occasion as this ceremony. Today we celebrate the 86th birthday of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., the drum major for justice, drum major for peace and equality, not just for African Americans, but for people from all nationalities, races, and creeds. We gather today as a city, as a community, as fraternity brothers, as representatives of humanity to pay tribute, to pay homage to a man who personified manly deeds, scholarship, and love for all mankind. I don't really think people realize that Dr. King was with us for approximately 12,000 or 14,244 days. He lived to be 39 years old before being struck down by an assassin's bullet in Memphis. But in the short 14,224 days, 
He taught the entire world how to go to war against unjust systems of inequality, armed with nonviolence and love. It is no accident that this great civil rights leader rose from the church, a gifted third generation Baptist preacher. It's no doubt this is why he set our souls aflame with his oratorical prowess, his powerful and prolific words, his pinpointed speeches that were relevant to his times. Preachers just have a way of touching the souls of men. But yet we only had him for about 14,224 days. Yet he left his fingerprints indelibly on the fabric of American society. So we who are assembled here today should not be lulled into thinking because the sun is shining brightly and that all is well in our world. To just remember Dr. King today is the least we all could do. Celebrating him brings us closer to giving him a proper place of honor and fondness in our hearts. But this day beckons us all to do something more radical, something more engaging, something more active. This day brings to mind the unfinished work that is still left to do. So we must act. The recent movie Selma chronicled turbulent events leading up to the historic march from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama, and the subsequent passage of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. These were the times of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., but not so different from our times we find ourselves in now. Unarmed black men have been killed by police in recent months, spurring protests and heightening tensions in the United States. In Ferguson, Missouri, and in New York, where a fatal shooting and police brutality resulting in the deaths of unarmed black men have caused weeks of violent protests. Americans, once again, must urge reforms in the criminal justice system in the name of equality. We all must act in a peaceful, but yet powerful, powerful way. The best way to pay honor to the 14,224 days or so. We had a man who walked among us. In that short time, the best way to honor him is to act. In a speech, in 1967, titled America's Chief Moral Dilemma, Dr. King said, we suffer from a kind of poverty of spirit which stands in glaring contrast to our scientific and technological abundance. We have learned to swim the seas like fish, fly the air like birds, yet have not learned the simple art of walking the earth like brothers. Until we learn to walk together as brothers, we all may perish as fools. So I leave you with these words. The best way to pay honor to these 14,200 or so days is to act and change history and alter the course of the world together. I leave you with these words. One city, one Columbia, one people. Thank you very much. I don't know about you, but I'm excited. Being on these sites, at this site, at this particular time, in the city of Columbia, on this date that God has made possible for us. Five years ago, I never thought as chairman we would be at this site in the metropolitan city of Columbia paying tribute 
to Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. We came a long ways, Colombian, and we are not to the mountaintop yet. As I look around, I see about 100 people. We should have had about 20,000 or more here for this occasion. As I look back and think about from which I have come, when I had to walk on the different sidewalks in this area, but here we stand today with a marker. We didn't get it easy. It was a fight. Some said no, but we said yes. And with the leadership of former Councilman Cromati, your chair, and with the help of city council and the mayor, we made things happen to get this marker in five points, the very heart of the hospitality area. We are honored. I want to thank the Alphas. I'm not paternal, so I don't know the different branches, but I say the Alphas for becoming a part of the committee. And since you're coming a part of the committee, you brought young blood, you brought new ideas, and we are most appreciative to you. We want you to continue the struggle. As the speakers say, if you believe in what Dr. King stood for, it's time to act and it's time to serve. It's time to make Columbia a better place to live and work. Don't forget the four o'clock program honoring the late Dr. King, the speaker, the executive director of the Columbia Urban League, James McLahorn. I hope to see you there for the further entertainment and paying tribute to the late Dr. King. God bless you. Have a good day. Brothers of Alpha, we have asked that you come forward and gather for the uh, fraternal, fraternal hymn and prayer.
Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we have done what we have come to do, to pay tribute, to honor the life and the legacy of our dear brother, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on this day. Father God, we realize that Dr. King's legacy included service, and service was not just for one day, but for 365 days a year. Father God, help us to remember to use the talents, the skills, and the abilities that you've endowed us with to make a difference in this society, in this city, in this state, and in this country, so that the legacy of Brother Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. would not be lost. We thank you as we leave this place, Father. We ask that you be with us, that you continue to keep us in your tender love and care. And we will be ever mindful and watchful to glorify your holy and righteous name. To you, Lord, who is able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before the true and living God, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power both now and forevermore. And all the people of God said, Amen. Amen. This concludes our service. As Mr. Carter said, at 4 p.m., we'd ask that you join us down at Martin Luther King Park for the program to continue these celebrations of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr.